Yeah, well, uh, this lecture is on uh, practical examples of vibration. In this week, uh, we have uh, studied uh, the basics of vibration, uh, rotodynamics, and so on. And then we will see, just to give an overview, what are the different manifestations of vibration, what are the practical usefulness of vibration. Vibration is useful. Otherwise, you know, we will do, we would not be doing condition based maintenance or monitoring using vibration. So, in fact, to us vibration of machinery is helpful because you know from this vibration we are going to tell what is the fault in the machine. So, in that context I think uh, vibration is good for us, but then vibration is highly undesirable uh, in many applications uh, human discomfort to begin with. Imagine you are going in a vehicle, your car seat is vibrating. Vibrations would induce fatigue failure, you know, vibrations would induce structural damage. Okay. So, we will see different uh, approaches, how this vibration is controlled, what are the ways vibrations uh, comes about and uh, we will see, see through some examples which we have, we will some, see some through some examples. Now, we have an fairly good idea about what this resonance is. Resonance, uh, the effect of resonance is my amplitude would increase at uh, r is equal to 1. That means, when the forcing frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the system, I will have large vibrations. Base excitation, vibration from the ground is transmitted and in fact, this is the idea behind the development of this seismic transducers or accelerometers. We measure vibrations at a surface by measuring the relative displacement of the sensing elements. Force transmission because of vibration, force gets transmitted to the ground or force from another machine comes into another machine through the ground. So, we had seen how this vibration and shock isolations were done to reduce either the motion transmitted or the force transmitted. Another uh, item or which creates vibration is rotating unbalance and misalignment. In fact, these are few of the very common rotating machinery faults being unbalance in the rotating shaft or the disc being carried by the shaft and the misalignment between two shafts which are connected by a coupling or supported on bearings. So, these also give rise to vibrations and we just saw in the lecture on rotodynamics how the critical speeds of rotating shafts happens because the shafts are flexible, they will have many natural frequencies and we will avoid operating the machine at their critical speed so that the condition of resonance does not occur. Another vibration which occurs is fluid induced vibrations. When fluid passes through aerofoils, there is vibrations and how this will induce uh, and that is dependent on the velocity of the um, fluid flow and so on. And particularly in heat exchangers etcetera, uh, this is a very important uh, characteristics aerofoil design. And then of course, structure bond energy transfer. You know, Vibration of course, requires a medium for transfer. So, even structures transmit energy. So, uh, this you know the all the structure bond vibrations which we feel in a vehicle is because of the vibration transfer. So, with this diagram we will just show you the different aspects of vibrations in everyday life. No, you have seen the effect of vibrations in an automobile comfort. You know, people nowadays are talking about NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Okay. These are three important parameters 
which people attribute in a product okay be it an automobile interior comfort So, for example, if you are driving a vehicle apart from being quiet in the interior, imagine if the, uh, this is your steering wheel, imagine if this is your rear view mirror. Imagine if there was excessive vibration of this rear view mirror because your it is attached to the windshield and there is vibration in the windshield because it is anchored to the vehicle body and then vehicle body is being having vibration energy because vehicle body is supporting the engine. So, one leads to another there is basically energy transfer but the rear view mirror gets excitation and it starts to vibrate. So, your a passenger or a, or a driver who is looking at the rear view mirror will get discomfort or irritated because he cannot focus on what is being shown on the mirror. So, now if you look at a mirror and the mirror is shaking, uh, you, will, you will have a sense of discomfort. So, there are many issues you know you all must have uh, heard of you know motion sickness while traveling in on uh, ships where there is large rocking motion okay this is another application of resonance in the sense for example our human body the internal organs are supported in a fluid in the uh, uh, cav uh, in the chest cavity so basically the internal organs have mass and they have a uh, certain stiffness. So, they also have a natural frequency and the human organs have natural frequencies around 6 hertz. Okay. Now, if you are going on a boat, you know, this is my view of the boat and if there is a large rocking motion and these are because of a choppy wave in the sea rough seas. So, there is a lot of rocking motion. So, a person who is standing on the deck okay, will have this forcing frequency coming around 6 hertz and then because there is resonance you will have large motions in your internal organs you will nauseate and vomit and that is what is motion sickness. So, in fact, uh, even you know I have uh, seen cases where people you know uh, have motion sickness while traveling in a um, vehicle where the seats are not properly isolated from the floor of the vehicle. Okay. So, this kind of issues do happen. So, we have uh, good vibrations, bad vibrations, these are all examples of bad vibrations, machinery vibrations and then of course, in uh, railway locomotives or uh, even in uh, coaches, we have vibrations. So, there, there are always efforts being made to reduce vibrations, but nevertheless let us see what is the useful vibrations. Well, as I was telling you right in the beginning of this lecture, useful vibration is a machine is vibrating and I can machine could be vibrating because of many reasons, but from a condition monitoring point of view, I want to drive home this point that I put a transducer or many transducers and I will get a signal some vibration signal. So, by analyzing the signal I will know the characteristics of this machine which has created this and imagine if this signals certain artifacts or a certain certain features change with time I will know that something is going wrong with this patient and that is what it is helping us in CBM. Okay. Condition based maintenance, condition monitoring, but then this gives you an example of some of the useful variations. 
vibrations are used to transport okay particles vibrations like here in an ultrasonic cleaner are used to clean through high frequency ultrasonic waves components vibration is used to break concrete rocks etc through what is known as jack hammering but of course there's an undesirable effect is you know which you will see this poor guy who is holding this jack hammer unless his fingers or palms are not protected or isolated he will have excessive exposure to high levels of vibration and that is and uh, there are limits to how much a human hand can be subjected to the vibrations and we will talk to that talk about that later vibrations is used for testing and i test a product in terms of giving in vibrations and see whether there is any resonance in that and so on so i will uh, though we have studied this earlier i thought i would show you pictorially see suppose i have a mass of ma supported on stiffness k and if it is given an initial displacement it will have a motion like this this is the displacement amplitude 0 to t and this will repeat if there is no damping this is an ideal system so this displacement expression is given by capital d sin omega and t where omega n is equal to 2 pi fn root over k by m is the circular natural frequency and this vibration is going to repeat every time t where t is the time period of the signal and because this is a single frequency signal the frequency of the signal is nothing but the inverse of the time period so in the displacement with the frequency curve i see this curve at fn is equal to 1 by t and this amplitude is going to be capital d so this is the simplest form of a vibrating system as i was telling you vibrations can either be represented as displacement or velocity or accelerations so i will give you another example uh, see this is a tractor wheel steering wheel okay and uh, the problem with this kind of uh, tractor wheel was you know as long as soon as they started the engine this steering wheel had an excessive vibration okay so uh, our efforts at uh, iit was how to reduce this vibration levels and then we studied this through a finite element model and found out the natural frequencies of the steering wheel and uh, we found out that the natural frequencies of the steering wheel was equal to the engine firing frequency so uh, what is this engine firing frequency in an ic engine suppose it is four stroke that means for every two revolutions i have one uh, power stroke so if the rpm of the engine is n so n by 60 is rps okay divided by 1 by k k is a factor k is equal to 2 which if it is four stroke and k is equal to 1 if it is two stroke times n where n is number of cylinders in that engine so this is the firing frequency of the engine so in this case this firing frequency was very close to the natural frequency so at at idle and the idle rpm was close to about 700 rpm i believe okay and k was 2 and n was 4 okay so you'll work out what the uh, um uh, natural frequency is and even if i take it for the sake of discussion here if we try take it 600 600 by 60 times 1 by 2 times 4 so this becomes 10 so this boils down to about 20 hertz okay this was a little higher than 20 hertz it was somewhere around 28 hertz so this rpm was a little higher 
So, the engine firing frequency at 600 rpm when the engine was idling is a slow speed diesel engine particularly used in tractors. So, the natural frequency of the steering wheel was very close to the uh, idling firing frequency. So, through a design modifications of the stiffness of the steering wheel, the natural frequency of the steering wheel was shifted away from this frequencies and then at idling the steering, uh, steering wheel did not have excessive vibrations. So, this is how one can play around with the natural frequencies design to change the <coughs> occurrence of resonance. Now, uh, that was just a single frequency examples of the harmonic oscillator, but if you see in practical examples real world there will be a rotor which is nothing but a shaft carrying a disc supported on two bearings which is supported and anchored to a foundation. Okay. So, if you look at the frequency response of such systems from the signal acquired by a transducer kept on the bearings, I will see many natural frequencies. And the best part about condition monitoring is every frequency here corresponds to a mechanical element in your machine. So, if a corresponding element in the machine has gone wrong, there will be change in the amplitudes at that corresponding frequencies and that is the genesis why CBM is so popular using vibration monitoring. So, continuing our discussions on the uh, simple harmonic oscillator. So, if I look at the uh, amplitude of the vibration is d and the velocity is the d omega cosine omega t and then again I differentiate the velocity by the way there will be a minus sign here, but if you look at the amplitude it becomes this. So, <coughs> if I have a displacement d as d sin omega t velocity is nothing but d by d t of d which is nothing but d omega cosine omega t and acceleration is nothing but d square of d and then this will be minus d omega square sin omega t. So, if you look at the amplitudes of d it is d amplitude of v it is d omega and amplitude of a it is minus d omega square. So, they are always related. Okay. If I know one I can and if I, if I know the frequency I can either divide velocity by omega to get displacement or sorry or if I uh, because I have given modulus here. So, if I <coughs> divide acceleration by omega I will get velocity if I multiply velocity with omega I will get acceleration. I invariably get asked this question what is the best parameter to measure once we are doing CBM. So, my first answer to anybody is you know uh, at high frequencies we have to measure acceleration because omega square omega being large this is a large quantity. So, signal to noise ratios are pretty good when you measure uh, acceleration okay. and of course, at low amplitudes uh, displacement is good enough, but somebody you know some standards say you know measure velocity and then you can uh, you are somewhere in between, but to answer this question is the relative velocity. Velocity is almost uh, linear in the uh, log scale and um, displacement has high amplitudes at uh, low frequencies. Okay. So, this is up to an uh, individual, but <coughs> nowadays of course, the piezoelectric accelerometers are available to measure acceleration where by knowing one you can measure the other. I, I was mentioning about that uh, jack hammer. So, there is an <coughs> excuse me ISO 2631 human vibration limit standards as to at different frequencies if somebody is having an exposure to 4 to 8 hours less than half an hour what is the permissible level in terms of velocity or in terms of acceleration. Okay. So, this uh, standard people can look up to. So, as a designer there is a certain limit okay what is the maximum level one can be subjected to at different frequencies 
different um, uh, duration of exposure. So, this governs the designing of <coughs> any equipment where human beings are to be used. For example, anything where you are holding like a steering wheel, like a jack hammer or in fact, even the human seat. Okay. Uh, this is a seat accelerometer, this is just to show you a seat accelerometer can be strapped onto the seat and basically this has a accelerometer in between it and somebody is made to sit on it. So, if the seat is having excessive vibration, this exposure limits can be measured on this human vibration analyzer. So, you can get the vibrations in x, y, z and whether they are within the limits. Okay. Particularly in vehicles, you know this is the standard nowadays that uh, your human vibrations are the human hand arm seat vibrations are within the ISO limits. Okay. So, manufacturers are uh, putting a lot of efforts to have good um, isolators and so on. Another case here is hand arm vibration, this is you know uh, a hand, hand operating tool and then this is an accelerometer which has been put here to measure the vibrations faced at the handle. I am sure all of you must have experienced even just holding a hand drill and imagine uh, this is fine you know, when we do a hand drilling operation for you know, just driving home one screw or one nail and so on, but imagine a operator who is day in and day in uh, day out you know, holding a, a pneumatic hammer or a you know, drilling machine and uh, for 8 hours of uh, operations what kind of levels he is exposed to. So, these are certain rules which have been put in place nowadays, so that you know, people do not have uh, over exposure to viruses, because it gives rise to a uh, lot of disorders. But then why do we do vibration monitoring? Because all common failure modes have distinct vibration frequency components that can be isolated and identified and that was the preamble why uh, vibration monitoring is so popular in CBM. And the next one is the amplitude of each distinct vibration component will remain constant unless there is a change in the operating dynamics of the machine train. Okay. So, you know, if, if the there is no change, you know, that, that is what you know people do in CBM, they do what is known as trend monitoring. with time and then this see the vibration parameter. This frequency is dependent you know for example, you know for the sake of discussion say every month time is in months. And so on. If a certain parameter which I am monitoring is almost constant, but then I see. So, this obviously means that something, something has gone wrong, the amplitude of each distinct vibration component will remain constant unless there is a change in the operating dynamics of the system. So, this gives us an indicator, well something has gone wrong with this machine. So, this is where even a simple trend monitoring will give you an idea as to something is perhaps wrong with your machine and this is what uh, of course, and then you can measure and do, do an actual fault diagnosis by measuring the vibrations and doing an analysis which we will discuss uh, later on. So, by the way, uh, when we are talking about this monitoring, there is an ISO standard, ISO 10816, which says this that a vibration level in RMS that is the root moon square level has to be measured. The frequency range of measurements is from 10 hertz to 1000 hertz. Vibration level is measured in the velocity mode and if you look at the standard, there are three levels for a particular machine power which says whether it is acceptable intermediate or unacceptable. By the way, this is uh, standard, th this chart is also to some extent given in the appendix of my book. So, for example, if a machine is less than 1000 kilowatt, 
its maximum RMS level at any point should be less than 3 millimeters per second. So, the standard lists out uh, and it has in different parts depending on uh, what kind of machine and so on. So, uh, this is just to give you an example uh, where this vibration measurements can be done. So, this is a motor gear box with a coupling okay. and these are the, the red ones are the foundation locations and then the all these are the, the, the are remaining black are the bearing locations. At, at every foundations there are you know, certain levels of uh, material maybe you know concrete steel and the frame and so on and at every point you can measure in three directions because as I was telling you vibration is directional. So, such a survey can be done and then so for example, from such a systems you measure all the values and keep it with you and then measure after another month, another month and so on and if there is a change you can get alarmed that something is wrong with this machine. Okay. Uh, this is just to give an example of on a conveyor system, uh, there is a coupling here and this is on the concrete foundation a frame and the machine foundation and this is the gearbox okay, being driven by a motor driving a conveyor system. See vibrations of rolls in paper mills is a very, very important uh, problem. So, you can see all these cables here, they are monitoring the bearing condition okay. and uh, we can do because you know, if you do look at the frame of the dryer in a paper mill, there is a frame and the frame must not have resonance equal to the rotating speed of the paper mill rolls. And uh, we have done an uh, finite element study to understand the loads on the frame, so that you know, the vibrations caused because of this dynamic loads are within the limits, otherwise there will be structural damage to the component. And then the stresses were determined using such finite element analysis. You can find out the dynamic stresses okay. and then mode shapes of the dryer frame because this is an elastic model. So, we can find out the natural frequency of such systems okay. and then you can uh, find out that you need to avoid the natural frequency of this while you are in operations. So, if you look at a paper mill, we just had a class on rotodynamics, there are many rolls and then these are the roll diameters given in millimeters and these are the uh, different uh, RPMs. Okay. And if I have the, uh, the speed in you know, a paper mill speed comes out at different uh, RPMs. Okay. So, we have increased the paper mill speed from 1050 meters per minute to 1150 to 1250 and then we have measured the roll resonances. So, once you are operating the plants at different speeds that means when you operate at a higher speed your rolls are running at higher uh, rotational speeds, but some of these rolls could be under resonance. So, one has to avoid in particularly in paper mills when there are many rolls one has to individually find out the critical speeds of each of the rolls and ensure that none of them undergo resonance otherwise there will be premature failure. I had covered this earlier in the uh, class on vibration and isolation products. So, there are many types of isolators available in the market. Uh, another, another example is this inertia block because the objective is to reduce vibration which is either getting transmitted or getting transmitted into the machine in a backhoe loader also. A, a, again in the tractor I had told you about this isolators being put gas turbines isolators are ensured so that there is no large rocking motions and these are another isolators which are being put here. Cable mounts we discussed cable mounts used in missile launchers. Okay. Thank you.